What's up you guys? Today we got a really cool video. I'm going to be going to California's tallest bridge. Now this is also the fourth tallest bridge in all of the United States and it's one of the top 70 tallest bridges in all of the world. So we're going to be taking out the 2024 Wired Freedom. I'm right down the street from my house and I'm about to take this thing out and go the 19, almost 20 miles that it's going to take to get there. I did not bring a separate battery pack to charge. I did bring the charger in case I need to stop somewhere and charge up. But I did not bring any uh, external batteries or anything to get me back home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride at probably about pedal assist two or three most of the time and occasionally turn up the power to go up some hills and then try to coast down the downhills and not use any power at all in order to make this almost 40 mile round trip on this 2024 Wired Freedom. So we're on Auburn Folsom Road right now. I'm going to keep it in pedal assist two. And like I said, when I go down hills, I'm going to be uh kind of coasting and trying not to use the power so i'll probably be turning the power off downhill and just pedaling um what's nice about this bike is you don't get any ghost pedaling till about really i mean i'm pedaling right now and it's giving me a little bit of torque downhill and we're going 24 miles an hour so i'd say down to about or up to about 30 miles an hour you don't really get any ghost pedaling beyond that it's it's a little bit but it's not too bad and that's one time where the um torque sensor in my opinion is not as good as the cadence sensor because with the cadence sensor you just have to be turning the cranks and you get that power whereas with the cadence sensor in order to get that full power at high speed you have to really be pushing on it hard and giving it a lot of torque which is hard to do when you're ghost pedaling i am a little bit concerned about the cars to the side of me so i do have my helmet on and i'm being extra cautious today luckily it's early so there isn't a ton of traffic on this road yet and then on the way home it should be just after everyone gets to work and so um, i should be not in a complete you know traffic jam of cars while i'm trying to ride down the road in the bike lane all right here's one narrow choke point i'm going to kind of look back and make sure we're good i do wish i had a, a mirror here a rear view mirror i haven't had mirrors on any bikes before but when doing riding like this it definitely seems like it would be a worthwhile investment beautiful morning guys it is a little chilly now we're moving the temperature does show is 59 60 degrees ambient and 82 degrees on the motor temperature sensor we're only putting out about 430 watts in pedal assist 2 but we are keeping up speed of 20 miles an hour at a distance of 19 to 20 miles or so to get to this bridge, it should take us about an hour at these speeds if I average 20. And hopefully a little faster downhill and probably a little slower uphill. Voltage is showing at 64.8 volts. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power off right here. Just kind of pedal. Now if you haven't seen my channel or any videos about this bike, it's a 60 volt. Uh, 1200 watt hour battery with a 40 amp controller and a maximum theoretical output on the motor of about 22 to 2400 watts so pretty impressive stats it definitely it can go 40 miles an hour um, it's it's the bike that I would say if you want to be able to go fast this will be your bike I am excited to get the new version, the 2024 Wired Freedom Plus, that's coming out with the dual mo with a dual battery system, and that'll give you a 20 amp hour front battery and a 15 amp hour rear battery, which will be great for um, going long trips like this. As I'm actually looking forward to doing some longer distance range tests with that bike and all sorts of different things. So stay tuned for that as well. 67 volts is fully charged for this bike and about 50 volts is completely depleted for the battery so far fairly mellow ride uh nice and level and it'll be this way for quite some time until we get up into the auburn area which is sort of foothills of the sierra nevada mountains actually to the to the right if you head west you'll hit tahoe um, so it will start getting a little bit more crowded all right guys so update uh we got about five miles to the first turn which would be on high street and uh, we got about an hour left. So of the 18 or 19, I guess 20 miles, depending which route you take uh, to the actual bridge itself, we only have about 8.7 miles left. So we're basically 
at the halfway point. Uh, power wise, we're still at 62.6 volts. Obviously, if you see my other videos, you know that we're not gonna lose any bars, but I'm monitoring that voltage to kind of know where I need to be as far as power. I'd like to arrive there with 60 volts, but if I get there with at least 58 or 59, I should be okay because I believe it's gonna be more uphill on the way there and the way back will be more downhill. So trying to arrive there with at least 58, 59 volts, preferably 60, we'll see how that goes. We are at 62 and a half under load right now, which is about 63 and a half, 64 if we come to a stop. So still about four volts left. We're down to eight and a half miles. It's showing that we should be getting there around 8.09. It's 7, 12 right now in the morning. I'm hoping to get there by eight, kind of cruise around the bridge, check it out, take some photos and video, and then head back home because I got somewhere to be a little later. So stay tuned guys. Still, it's 60 degrees, so it's warmed up just a tad from the low spots there. And we're showing 145 degrees on the motor temperature sensor. So uh, we've gone about, I'd say at this point, about eight miles, um, maybe nine, and we're at the halfway point. Stay tuned. So in Auburn, there's a lot of history. It's a very old town. They did, I think, gold mining up here. And you'll notice something here on the right. This house is a stone house made out of rocks and mortar. Pretty cool. You don't see stuff like that very often. A lot of these houses and even the infrastructure, like a bridge I passed back there, was built in 1931. Some of it even earlier than that. So a lot of the buildings and things out here are built at least a hundred years ago not all of them there's obviously modern homes too but a lot of them are closer to a hundred years old especially if we get into town here we're going to see sort of the old uh, college building and a bunch of different churches and even houses that are historic and over a hundred years old so pretty cool stuff all right guys we made it to auburn city limits here so you can see on the sign there is a gold miner panning and established in 1848. And the elevation is pretty cool, 100, I'm sorry, 1,234, so one, two, three, four feet of elevation. Really cool, so just entered Auburn from Granite Bay area. It goes through Loomis, Auburn, and then up into Newcastle, depending on which road you take and which way. But we made it to Auburn. Now we just need to go the rest of the distance to the actual uh, bridge itself starting to hit a lot of elevation now like i said this city is known for kind of its foothills and its amazing views from the tops of them so we're starting to do the climb now we went from i believe granite bay is at 100 or 200 feet elevation and this is at about 1200 feet i don't know if that's the peak of the city or if that's just kind of where we're at at this point we're already at a thousand feet but we will be climbing and this is the part that i wanted to make sure i don't overuse the battery so we have enough power to get there. I'm in pedal assist three at one of the lower gears and we're still uh, only going 11 miles an hour. <laughs> but some of the views up here from these houses, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. All right, so we are showing about 6.3 miles left to get there. Showing about 46 minutes to get to our location at the bridge. So still got a ways to go, but it's only six miles away. So we sh we're doing pretty good. Now we just got to deal with all these hills and uh, we'll see you at the bridge. Really cool little town, Auburn. I actually should do more videos up here. A lot of really cool stuff to, to see, a lot of history and whatnot. So I may be coming out here a little bit more to kind of make some more videos. Let me know if you guys like to see that type of content out here. Um, maybe even some historical stuff for this area. Maybe some trail riding down by the lake. Leave a comment below, let me know. So most of this trip I've been using Pedal Assist 2. Check out this old house with the columns. Super cool. We got the fire brigade coming. Cal Fire.
let those guys stay in their little pack together. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna turn left. We're gonna go over this little bridge here. We're only about three miles away, folks, which is great. We're doing excellent on time. Voltage is at 60.5 or so, not under load. We're cross over this little train bridge here. Got a little extra time. Let's All right. Check that out, guys. Pretty cool. Got the American flag flying high. Got the train tracks. All right, so we're showing 61.3 volts with the bike just sitting, which is great, actually. We've only used about six volts, less than six volts to get here. And we've gone approximately, if we have three miles left, we're about uh, 15 miles or so, 16 miles into the trip. So pretty incredible how much you can increase your range on these bikes by not using all the power. So what I love is that you have all that power available to you but if you don't want to use it or you want to go further distance, you don't have to. And it enables you to really travel, you know, anywhere within reason. All right, so we're on Lincoln Highway. We're just going to take this all the way basically to the bridge. See like right here, use some power to kind of get through this light. Check this out, guys. Check out this building. He's got the guy coming out of the top there, the paddleboard. Here's another one of those older houses that's probably built, I'm assuming, in the 30s. It's kind of nice to be able to know the ranges. If you haven't seen my range test videos, I'll link them up here on the right top of the screen. But check out my I have a best case scenario and worst case scenario and a real world scenario. Best case scenario is pedal assist one. That'd be the most miles you can get on a video. Oh, I'm sorry, on a ride. And I put that in the video. And then there's pedal assist five, which is the fastest you can go. So that'd be worst case scenario. And then I have real world scenario, which is about pedal assist three. So you can check out all those different ranges there and see, you know, what you can expect on this bike. And I am about a 225 to 235 pound rider at six foot three. So I'm a bigger guy. And uh, the numbers that this bike is able to put up is pretty impressive. Just really excited for the dual battery version coming up soon. So you can see the price difference here at this shell, 573 a gallon, about a dollar more a gallon right there by the freeway. With brand name, you know, gas station. Nobody there, obviously. Okay, I think we're at the last part of the ride before we get to the, the bridge. So I guess technically this area is called Bowman. So welcome to Bowman, everybody. If you made it this far in the video, or if you've been watching my other videos and you enjoy them, leave a like and more importantly, subscribe so that you see future videos coming out. I post one video every week on Saturday. And occasionally I'll post other videos during the midweek. Uh, I'll be doing a couple other tests on some new bikes and I even have a scooter that's gonna be coming out, which, you know, scooters are not necessarily my thing, but they are very handy uh, when you're going on road trips or, you know, you have a vehicle like a car and you don't have a truck. I'll be going on a long road trip and I'm taking my car to get the good gas mileage and I can't bring my bike with me, but I will be bringing the scooter so I can still ride around at you know the beach where i'm going in southern california for a couple weeks so we got a starbucks there and a mcdonald's i'm just taking mental note in case i need to uh stop and charge or anything like that on the way back
All right, guys, we made it to the bridge. So if you ever want to come out here from the freeway or if you're in the area, you take the 80 freeway and you exit at Forest Hill Road. And so we're right at that intersection, which is just over the bridge for the freeway. So you drive over it and you head down this road right here and it'll take you to the bridge. Now it's a very steep road going down and up out of it. And the bridge sits at about 730 feet of elevation. Um, oh, I'm sorry, 730 feet above the water level below. And it spans about 2,400 feet. So almost a half a mile in total length. I think this is a good spot to see how fast we can go. Forty-one, forty-two, forty-three. We're getting a lot of wind resistance, so about forty-three miles an hour. And here's the bridge, guys. We just lost our first bar off the battery meter. Check out that view, guys. So here's the bridge right here, the Forest Hill Bridge. There's a pedestrian walkway on both sides, which is really nice to kind of protect people. A lot of times, especially in the evening, people will be out here and checking out the view. So there's a bunch of trails that also runs down below and above the bridge and it goes down to the river there you can see which is super cool um, and I think I will be doing some rides down there at a future date when I have a little more time all right so here's the bridge like I said this has been featured in many different movies and used for different scenes throughout the years it's also a uh, unfortunately an area where people have you know decided to unalive themselves and it is also so we are now on top of california's tallest bridge this is the tallest bridge in california at 730 feet above the water below it goes through the fork of i believe it's the american river that comes off of the Placer County Folsom Lake. So pretty cool stuff, guys. Absolutely beautiful out here. It's early morning. It's about 8 o'clock. Hear that train in the distance. So I'm realizing this probably would have been a better view of the bridge if I would have actually been down below looking up at the bridge. So there's a bunch of different trails uh, you can take, such as this one below here. You see the, where the river winds through over the train bridge. And looking this way here, you can see part of the river. So it's all running down towards the lake, the Folsom Lake there bunch of different trails that kind of wind through this area. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's some people walking just right there below. Wow, I can feel the bridge shaking from all the cars riding along it. Really cool. So the whole bridge is shaking with the cars driving by. Tallest bridge in California, folks. Got a helicopter overhead. I bet you he's got an amazing view. Check that out. The view is just unbelievable up here. Nice high bars. The bars are, I'm six foot three and the bars are about the height of me. So about as tall as most people. Keep anybody from trying to purposely or non-purposely go over the edge there. All 
All right, so while we're here, let's at least ride down to the other side of the bridge. Like I said, I'm gonna try and go down a little ways on a trail to kind of get a better shot of the bridge itself. Looks like people posted little sayings along the way. Your story doesn't end, keep going. Jesus loves you. Of course, you know, a bunch of different little keep fighting. Interesting. You are loved. All right. And there is a call box in case of emergency. Hard to believe guys, I'm on the tallest bridge in California. Pretty cool, I didn't know. It was only, you know, less than 20 miles away from my house. Uh, I found out somebody talking about it and then I ended up looking it up and was really amazed to hear that that was right here. So interesting sign here, it says, so interesting sign. So there's an interesting sign here, it says, river deadly cold, stay out, stay alive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that kind of makes sense. You know, you look at it and you think, oh, it's a nice day, it's probably not that bad. That river is colder than you would think because it comes from the snow melt in the Sierras up near Lake Tahoe. So this looks like part of the trail here. I'll give you guys a quick view. Uh, so and on these trails there's a lot of poison oak they were saying you have to be cautious of. So there it is guys the Forest Hill Bridge 730 feet above the water. You can see all the trusses, the steel trusses and the concrete pillars supporting it all. Pretty incredible. I think, I believe the longest span in between those pillars is about 780 feet. And I mean, look at the engineering that it must have taken to get that, let alone the manpower to get all of this material out here and to get it all built. Luckily it's right off the interstate, Interstate 80, but pretty incredible, you know, looking at it, how it was designed and you know, the amount of effort it took to, to create something like this. So I'm assuming this is one of the trails you can take to get down there. I'd like to get a little bit closer. You can see some of the uh, graffiti, unfortunately, on the bridge where people can reach. Check that out, guys. I'm actually gonna leave my bike there for a second and kind of just walk down here to get a closer look at this bridge since I made it all the way out here. Holy cow. Is this steep? I know it doesn't show, but that is a steep walk away down there. If you slip and fall, you're, you're going. But check that out, guys. Thinking about walking down here a little bit. Like I said, I made it all the way down. The next step is to head back all the way home. Cause I gotta get going, but one day I'd like to come down and ride around on these trails down here because they do look very beautiful. And check out the river as well. I guess let's see what I'm doing here. And these uh, flowers, and these flowers are quite spiky. Those aren't very fun on your legs and they're all over. Uh, not too bad, it's supposed to be, but when you're riding your bike, they hit you and it doesn't feel good. Not the end of the world, but. All right.
Okay, so we made it a little bit lower here. We're now underneath the bridge. Pretty cool. Uh, okay, so I see how people get in. Keep out no pedestrians. County property. Guys, check out all the bolts. Incredible amount of work. All the way across the trusses, just bolts and nuts. Just absolutely nuts. Bunch of artwork as well, as you always imagine. Wouldn't be surprised if there's actually somebody living up there. It does get really cold out here. So again, there's the river. You got the 730 foot total distance from the bottom of the river to the very, very top. Going all the way up there. Check that out. Incredible. I'll put up a few screenshots as well with my phone. I don't know if you guys can hear the vehicles driving it overhead. They make a ominous sound as they go by. And here's the other side of the bridge. So that appears to be the walkway right there, entrance, which I'm sure is a uh, heavily reinforced door. So you enter that walkway there and you go into the door and that probably takes you across to do the inspection on the bridge. I'm sure that's what it was built for. Really incredible, guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's the Forest Hill Bridge, the tallest bridge in California, fourth tallest bridge in the United States and one of the top 70 tallest bridges in all of the world. We took the wired freedom here, it did great. We got about 60 volts left on the battery. Well guys, we're on our way back. Probably only about, at this point, six or seven miles from home. It's been almost all downhill, which is great. I didn't realize how much we were going up in elevation the whole time. Obviously we went from a couple hundred feet to 1200 feet. I believe the bridge uh, through Auburn was even higher, closer to 2000 feet of elevation. So it's been a really easy ride home. Uh, if I turn off, all the power to the bike we're still at about 57 volts here showing so hardly use any energy to get back home it looks like so guys check out this uh castle right here i always drive by here and see this and want to stop and kind of take a look at it it's a castle that was built from what i heard from people around here that it was someone i think a russian guy that built it for his family i don't know if he was an oligarch or if he was a like an arms dealer or a drug dealer or something, but he was a very, very, very extremely wealthy guy that decided to build this house kind of in a European, you know, cast, castle style, I guess you could say, like really cool property. It's got water that goes all the way around, just has a amazing setting. It's probably, I don't know, three or four, maybe five acres of land, just really beautiful the pond and everything. I wish I could get a better view of it, but fortunately I can't. I if I go up on top of these rocks, if I could see it a little bit better. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I just want to be able to give you guys a view of the property. Really cool. I mean, you can see it's just absolutely beautiful. There's like birds and everything all around the water. Some sort of little cathedral-ish type building right there in the distance. I'll zoom in for you guys in the video. Just an old neighborhood that um, this guy decided to build his family castle at and kind of turned into, um, you know, turned into, I guess a, not Airbnb, but some sort of like 
place where they can have events and whatnot. So there's a view of the lake and everything. Just really beautiful bridges and moats and all kinds of little water features. So I just want to stop and show you guys that because I always see it when I ride by and I think it's really cool. All right, we're almost home. I got about three and a half miles left. Appreciate you sticking with me to this point in the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe as usual. Share the video. We're at 56 volts resting. Still 71 degrees, motor temperature sensors at 161 degrees. I decided to sort of pedal a little less and throttle a little more and use a higher pedal assist level on the way home because I knew that um, I was getting close and you know I would not be running out of juice so I'm not as concerned because it's all downhill from here. Check out those flowers. Beautiful. And then you got look at this grapevine right here. Got some grapes growing on it right there in the middle. beautiful area I feel really lucky to be able to live in such a beautiful community and amazing schools it's just a great place to raise a family and live it's kind of like going back in time a little bit out here with the trees and the, the animals and not that high of density living you know it's it's very different than what I'm used to in Southern California all right, guys, we're almost home. When I get there, I'll give you guys an update on the voltage. Stay tuned. Check out this property. This guy's the bicycle lawyer. Mabel Salmon, attorney of law. Bicycle lawyer at gmail.com. So give him a call, guys, if you need any services. And here's something you don't see every day, guys. A horse in the bike lane. What the heck? Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Anyways, we're almost home. We're at about 53 and a half volts under load, about 54 volts while resting. Uh, I have been using a lot of the throttle and pedal assist five to get home a little quicker. It's all downhill, so I'm not concerned with not making it. I know that I'm close enough now at this point with enough power to make it home. So about a mile or two away, stay tuned. I'll give you the final voltage update. All right guys, we just made it back from the same place that we started at. So showing 53.8 volts on the uh, bike itself, 75 degrees now, so it's warmed up quite a bit, 177 degrees in the motor temperature sensor. The total trip was 18 miles on the way back. So 36 miles total. So 18 miles there and 18 miles back. So I'm really excited for the new 2024 Wired Freedom that's coming out. Right now you have a 60 volt, 20 amp hour battery with 1200 watt hours of storage. It'll have an additional battery in the back that's 60 volts, but it'll be 15 amp hours and it'll have 900 watt hours of total capacity. So you put that together and it'll give you 2100 watt hours of power or 35 amp hours. So it should be able to really go to a lot of different places and not have to worry about running out of any range and uh, really excited to be able to test that new bike. So stay tuned for that. It'll be coming up soon. I think they're shipping the bike in July, in mid-July at this point. So I should be getting one right around then. Like I said, guys, thanks for sticking with me the whole way. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below if you knew about this bridge uh, in California and if you knew that it was the tallest bridge. I didn't, that's for sure. And I live right down the road from it. So. Uh, maybe I'll be checking out a few other places if you guys have any ideas or if you know of anything up in this Auburn Folsom area um, even down to Sacramento with the new batteries I should be able to get there on my bike I want to check out some different spots maybe even some abandoned buildings and I know there is a mall that's been mostly abandoned it's just the main store still operating and the rest of it is basically empty so I might be checking out a few of those types of things if you're interested leave it in the comments below and I'll go take a look at those um, but for now Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.